welcome to tonight's Act 34 hearing regarding the NAP Elementary School renovation. If everyone would like to see, we'll get started. Okay, so the PA school code requires an Act 34 public hearing to be held when there is either new construction or a substantial addition to an existing school building. This hearing allows for the community to learn about the project that is being proposed for Knapp Elementary and the Board of Directors to hear the feedback from the community regarding said project. This board has, since we first got elected in 2017, promoted an open dialogue with all stakeholders in the district. So while this hearing is a legal requirement, it does square very nicely with our commitment to be open and transparent with our decision-making process. The purposes for this hearing are as follows. To establish the need for the project by reviewing historical events leading to the board's decision to proceed with the building program. To review the various options considered by the board prior to their decision to proceed with the project. To describe the renovations and additions to occur at Nath Elementary School and the educational program that serves as a basis for what is being proposed. To present the estimated construction cost, the total project cost, the financial needs, and an estimate of the local tax impact on the project. And finally, to give citizens and residents the opportunity to comment and to pose questions. We will have that opportunity for public comment after the presentation is completed. To be clear, <coughs> this, is not, this hearing is not a public debate, but a time for comment. Public comment will be limited to three minutes per person. We are, however, available after the meeting if someone wishes to <laughs> discuss anything further. On behalf of the board, we look forward to hearing your comments and observations. Thank you for taking the time to come out this evening. So with that, I will hand this over to Mr. Schrader. Go to Alex, oh, to Alex, okay. Good evening, Alex Glassman from Rudolph Clark, Special Counsel of the District. As stated in Ms. Stuhl's opening, the purpose of the hearing is to inform the residents of the school district of all relevant matters relating to planning, designing, acquiring construction, and furnishing of the proposed Knapp Elementary School renovations and additions. The no notice of the, uh, sorry, I would like to note for the record that the public notice of this hearing was advertised on November 27, 2019 in the Reporter in the Reporter Digital, and a copy of the proof of publication has been added to the record and already been provided to the court reporter. Thank you. Good evening. For the record, I am Dr. Curtis R. Dietrich, Superintendent of Schools here on the North Penn School District. In another couple weeks, I'll be completing my 10th year as the Superintendent of Schools. And during that time, we have renovated many of our buildings here in North Penn. It is now time to renovate the Knapp Elementary School. We've engaged in a process where we've uh, had many, many stakeholders involved. Uh, we went on tours to different schools to see what worked well and what didn't work as well and what the teachers and administrators at those schools would say. Uh, we took teachers and administrators from NAP with us to those schools to do those visits. We've had countless design development meetings. We've spent a lot of time getting stakeholder input in the renovations and additions to NAP Elementary School. We've also worked hard with our financial planners to be able to make this financed in a way that is affordable to our community. So we're really pleased with what we have to present this evening to the stakeholders of NAP and to the school board. So we do invite the public's comment this evening and give us the feedback on the plans. We've also engaged our community with the Home and School Association through uh, weekly updates from the principal. Uh, there have been some uh, design development things that have been shared throughout that process. So we've had a lot of input on this and we feel really comfortable with what it is that we're presenting this evening to provide that very important 21st century learning environment for the students of the Knapp Elementary School. So with that, I will turn it now to Jonathan Castle, one of our board members.
Good evening. I'm Jonathan Casa, Board Director, also Chairman of the Facilities and Operations Committee. Two years ago, as Chair of the Facilities and Operations Committee, the Board committed itself to transparency, clear communication, which would lead to better accountability uh, of ourselves as a Board, but also to the community. A number of steps were taken over the past two years which have led to this point. There was an audit which occurred a comprehensive audit across all of the facilities that the district has. That was internally done. It was an opportunity to begin to assess what the needs of the district are so that we could begin to set priorities. Concurrently, there were also studies conducted by outside experts, and this external information was used to inform our monthly facilities and operations committee uh, meetings over the last two years as we began to work on that feedback which eventually led to two community forums at two separate sites in which we shared this information with the community. This information was also shared in monthly email updates as well as other channels that the district used to communicate to the public. Ultimately, in the last year, we were able to unveil a 10-year facilities plan. It wasn't just the completion of the plan that mattered, but the fact that this is an online document which does change according to the information that we have. This is a document that's multi-dimensional and ranks by priority in building the needs of each building and the estimated costs. Throughout this process to clearly communicate our district needs, we recognized that Knapp Elementary School was always at the top or near the top of these priorities. And it's because of that, out of transparency and communication, and to have accountability to the district uh, constituents as well as ourselves as a board, we're here today because Knapp Elementary and this discussion about the type of renovation, something we want to share and make sure that we have the inclusion of the entire community in the decisions that we're about to make going forward. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Julianne Romich, school director and a member of the Facilities and Operations Committee. So as this process, as a committee and as a board, we've worked together to really assess the needs. And when we looked at the need for the renovation of NAP, we factored in time. So NAP is a 1955 construction with a 1968 addition and a 1998 addition and construction. So looking at those um, operation systems, the, the needs and the way that school was designed at that time, we're, we factored that in. We're also looking, and it's very important to factor in the needs of students. So looking at the needs of students in a 21st century education, having a design that is putting students at the center. So Dr. Dietrich mentioned the design phase, and for me that has been one of the most valuable and critical um, pieces of this entire project. And that's the part where they've actually really brought teachers in. So teachers were part of the design process. They were part of a committee. Teachers came in over the summer. They've taken um, tours of other, of other schools. They've gotten to see other, other things that might work. And at the heart of that has been the feedback from students. So what would a student need? What do we need to put into our classrooms? What do we need to have in our space that would be at the, the put the space at this, um, create a student-centered space? I want to thank everyone who's come out tonight for this meeting and everyone who's come out for the tours. It's been great to show you um, NAP and the, and the building as it stands right now. Um, I'm a proud NAP parent and very proud to be part of this project and proud to hear the impact um, and the ideas from all of you. So thank you for coming. Good evening, I'm David Schrader. Our firm is Schrader Group and we're from uh, Maniunk. Um, I'm going to describe a few portions of the project here. I'll go through the project history and need. I'll try to dovetail behind uh, the superintendent and board uh, members. I'm going to then talk about the options that the district discussed as part of this process, and then I'll get into the project itself, uh, handing it off eventually to Scott Shearer for the financial alternatives portion. So historically on this project, um, 
what we were doing was doing what we would typically do in a Department of Education feasibility study for a project, and that is to uh, analyze demographic data, which is enrollment projections for a project, uh, try to calculate how those work with the capacities of various buildings, do an assessment and, a, and an appraisal of certain buildings within the district, and then to offer alternatives as solutions to those issues within the district. So the district had embarked upon a process of gathering information not only from Department of Education for enrollment projections, but from Montgomery County Planning Commission as well. So that's what's referenced in this slide. We were hired in May of 2018, began the process to evaluate four of the buildings within the districts, and I'll, I'll share that with you shortly, uh, and then presented the findings in October of 2018 to the support services meeting. The information is all available online at this point. We were then approved in February of 2019 uh, to engage in this first project, uh, the renovations and additions to the Knapp Elementary School, which I'm going to be sharing with you this evening. So just back to the enrollment projections for a moment. The Department of Education maintains their own enrollment projections, in which case for your district, they had anticipated that the 2019 enrollments would be very close to what the actual enrollments were, and that in 2025 and 2026, the projected enrollments might be very similar as well, representing a stable pattern within your district. Now, the district had enrolled, as I said, or engaged Montgomery County Planning Commission to, to do the same. And as you see from the bottom line here of 12,789 students in 2021-2022, those numbers parallel the Department of Education numbers almost exactly. So the bottom line is that's what the district should be uh, looking towards for the short and the long-term growth patterns within the district for the time being. So within the study itself, in 2018 when we were engaged for the project, there were four specific buildings that the district asked us to uh, analyze. They were Knapp Elementary School, Pendale Middle School, North Penn High School, and then the Educational Services Center. The district maintains all of the buildings that you see on this slide, and the grades that are housed in each are described here. Uh, you already heard a little bit of the history of what years the buildings were built and added to. Those are described further here. This information is all in a document that is called the Act 34 Hearing Booklet, which will be available online as well. So any information that any of the public needs relative to this, it will be available uh, to all. So of those four buildings that we talked about, NAP obviously was one of the specific buildings that we analyzed. We brought a team of architects and engineers and civil engineers in to take a full look at the building, spent several days touring through the entire facility and did an entire assessment of the building. Those of you who took a tour tonight uh, see the condition. It is well maintained for its, its age. However, the systems are beginning to fail um, and the spaces within are beginning to look less like each other and uh, more like independent spaces within the building and thus a lot of the reason why uh, the thought of um, renovating and adding to the building is of interest to the district. So you're seeing window systems, brick finishes and so on around the periphery of the facility. The analysis of the building is multiple pages. I think it's probably 30 or 40 pages but it, it breaks down to this. Uh, there are site issues on the site, including water ponding, concrete curb uh, repair needs, and a couple of other issues related to circulation. Those of you who are familiar with how the building works, uh, the buses come up the same driveway the cars do, and the district administration has to do its best to sort out the buses and the cars on the site as they get to the building. Uh, from a building standpoint, it requires the typical Americans with Disability Act upgrades that a building of this age needs. Um, there's roof repair needs as well as there's actually roof replacement needs on a portion of the building. Windows and doors are at their, uh, the end of their usable life. As, and you can read the rest of this, masonry joint sealants, interior finishes to be replaced. And the need for a, a true security vestibule with an office directly adjacent to it so that you can bring people in in a secure fashion. Electrical and lighting, everything that you would expect of a building of this age, the need to replace the lighting, the need to replace power systems and to add um, upgrades to transfer switches, generators and things like that. The heating, ventilating and air conditioning needs full replacement throughout. 
Um, and then there's a desire to provide air conditioning and dehumidification throughout the building. Plumbing and fire protection, um, all of the typical upgrades are required for plumbing drainage systems, ADA replacements of fixtures, um, high efficiency gas fire uh, water heaters and fire sprinkler systems. Uh, a building of this vintage probably doesn't have the level of safety and security from uh, CCTV, which are or TV surveillance systems, fire alarm system upgrades, and other safety and security devices, and then technology upgrades as well. So all of these factor into a building that you would look at of this age. When the cost analysis was done, the construction cost for all of those within the building was in the neighborhood of $15.2 million with soft costs at about four and a half for a total of $19.7 million. What that did not do was it did not change any of the configuration of the building, it did not upgrade specifically any of the educational spaces, and it did not get rid of the modular classrooms. So we engaged in a process of analyzing the building further. And what you're seeing on the screen right now were the dollar value upgrades required at each of the facilities just to get them up to current standards with building systems and so on. Um, again, we're focusing on Knapp Elementary School for this Act 34 hearing, so that's why we're gonna focus on that for each of these slides. But the outcomes for the balance of the buildings are shown here as well. We also performed that building capacity and utilization summary. Um, and most importantly to this building was, if you remove the modular classrooms, this building then is functioning at 120% of its capacity. So it's clear you need the modular classrooms or you need an addition to replace those. So the options that were considered within the, the realm of this, we looked at three different versions for the elementary school. One was a renovation and a 10 classroom addition. One was a renovation and an addition to fulfill some of those 21st century learning spaces that some of the folks that you heard went on tours saw and thought perhaps we could bring back to this building. And then the alternative number three was a new construction building on the site. And you see this range of 28 to 30 million all the way to 42 to 44 million. In the end, the district's intention was to go with the option one, which is what we've been pursuing as a project. You're also seeing on these slides the um, options that were considered for Pendale, North Penn High School, and uh, we also were looking at the renovations to the uh, Education Services Center as well. So the hearing that we're here for is the Knapp Elementary School, and that's what we'll be focusing on from this point forward. So to get into the project description, the things that we'll be talking about here are the plans. Um, there's a process in place currently called PlanCon. It's Department of Education's planning and construction process. And there are a whole series of forms that you have to fill out as part of that to try to track ultimately what the new construction cost for the project is to compare that to new constructions across the state. So those forms are included in this Act 34 booklet that will be available. Um, those documents are a little bit difficult to read, so we've tried to simplify it here in this process. But ultimately, what you should understand from this is we are renovating about 64,475 square feet of the building, and we're adding 13,080 square feet to replace those modular classrooms. So that's ultimately what we're doing with this project. So the proposed site plan is currently up on the screen. You can see in white the current building, although what you're also seeing in that floor plan, and I'm identifying it with the laser as well, is the new layout for the building, which I'll share with you in a moment. The orange is the classroom, the new classroom area to replace the modular classrooms that currently sit to the right-hand side of the building here. The drive from Valley Brook Drive up here uh, currently goes into the parking area. And at this point, what happens on a traditional day today would be a separation of buses to one area of the site and parent drop off to another area. So what has been proposed is a new driveway in from Knapp Road coming into this point, and then this would be a bus drop off area. So there, there will now be a separate bus drop-off area and a separate parent drop-off area. And you can see that this parent drop-off area has that nice length to it uh, to allow for uh, a good 
run of cars as they back up to drop the kids off on a rainy day. Uh, and separately, this bus drop off would allow for these two to be separated. Now obviously when you have the students being dropped off at a certain point, you also need a new entry point. So what we've incorporated here is a covered walkway area into a new entry point in the building. So if you can kind of keep that, that plan in mind, I'll share with you what the intentions of the renovations and additions are. So this is the proposed new building and the things that you would identify with today, the green area is the gymnasium that you're currently in. The purple area, or however you see these colors, bear with my color uh, nomenclature here. These are classrooms along the front at the parent drop-off area. The classrooms in purple around the perimeter here are current classrooms as well. And the area that you see in orange and a lighter purple or lighter blue or whatever in this area is the current cafeteria and kitchen area. The light blue area today is your administrative and entry point. And so what we would do is demolish all of the walls in this area and put a new cafeteria and kitchen right at the heart of the building. And then we would take the old library or the current library and convert that to the new administrative suite so that you can have that appropriate flow of students or parents, I should say, or visitors through an administrative point that you can actually monitor who's coming and going to the building right from an office at that front door. So the main change here is a, is a movement of the administrative suite from the center of the building down to where the library is today. So the purple areas at the bottom of the sheet here are the new classrooms to replace the modular classrooms. And we've created a new vestibule in from this side that as I just shared with you, the bus entry would be, this would be the new bus entry for the building. So students would filter in this direction, and then the parent drop-off, where kids are dropped off from their vehicles, would come in this entry. The purple in the center of all of this is a space that's located between the new proposed library, that's in orange, and this cafeteria. And this was an attempt to bring in some of the concepts that we saw in some of the other buildings that we visited. More of a large group instruction space, uh, space to gather large groups of students, also kind of a, a maker type space outside of the library and outside of the cafeteria. And we've got a folding partition in there, so if you want to do larger group events in the building, you can actually open that partition and share this whole cafeteria and large group space to make a big gathering space in the center of the building. So it's a nice way to bring a bunch of these contemporary concepts into a, a space that can be used in two or three different ways. So that's kind of the makeup of the proposed plan for the building. The office now gets right in the center but can also see these entry points. The new cafeteria goes to the heart of the building, the large group space, and the library. So a plan is interesting, but probably images are worth a thousand words. And so if you follow this, this video starts where the actual modular classrooms are. So the modular classrooms sit here today. This would be the new bus drop-off area, and that's what's represented in the video here. So you're coming down towards the new bus drop-off point. There will be a covered walkway into that entry that I talked about. And now in the imagery, you're seeing the new classroom areas, more or less to match the renovated uh, classroom areas. We'd be renovating the entire existing building, replacing all the finishes, uh, repairing parts of the roof and replacing parts. What you're seeing here is the old library, new administrative suite, looking at the new main entry. And now you're coming into a brand new entry point to the building. You've passed by the main office. This is what the new entry point would look like. You can kind of see that secure entry vestibule on the right-hand side, looking down towards the current classroom wings that would be completely renovated, new systems, new finishes, and looking at the new light-filled interior of the cafeteria. And the imagery that you're seeing just beyond is that large group open space, open with the folding partition slid to the left, and then beyond that is the library. So this would be the fully open space configured with daylighting in it so that um, all of the center parts of the building would be filled with daylight. Uh, that partition can be closed for the balance of dining times so that it doesn't disrupt any of the use of the rest of the spaces. 
So I would just share with you as we go through a couple of these images, this is the proposed cafeteria with that folding partition closed and then with it open. With it closed and open. So you can see how that can be extended from just a dining space to a full use space. Uh, it was expressed to you that we have met with the teachers on multiple occasions. Uh, all of the finishes, all of the casework and cabinetry has all been designed with them so that the spaces are the way that the teachers would like to see them and, and the folks who work within the facility. So the image that you're seeing here is looking back from the large group instruction space back towards the cafeteria with that folding partition open and now that's with it closed. Uh, this is the library space with a variety of teaching areas in it. And then even the existing classrooms will all be fully renovated. And so what they'll get is they'll get new flooring, new ceilings, uh, they'll get new cabinetry, and the layouts as you see are the layouts that were designed with the teachers. Um, new lighting, new HVAC systems, so heating, ventilating, and air conditioning within the facility. There are also a group of small group instruction spaces located throughout the building. So if there's a need to pull students out for specific um, educational or instruction, they can use these spaces rather than using just the hallway. This is the fifth and sixth grade classroom wings that will be in the new classroom wing. And as you can see, the new ones look just like the renovated ones. And so as you walk into this building, uh, about two years from now, this building will look brand new throughout. You will have an instrumental music and band room towards this space in the building. And just to give you a sense of the left-hand side shows the before imagery, the right-hand side shows the renovated and added to imagery. Same with that point where you can see there's a new bright entry space, one that you can identify when you walk up to the buildings to where the front door is. And then the new bus loop entry, which as you can see from the image in the lower left-hand corner currently is the modular classrooms. So that's the fun part. Now we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Department of Education requirements, which are the tracking processes for the costs of the project. So there are a variety of costs that go into a building. There are the structure costs. There are all of the fees. There are things that we call movable fixtures and equipment, which is the furniture that you're sitting at, and many of the computer and uh, audiovisual things that go into a building. Uh, there are site costs related to um, the sewer disposal and fees. Uh, which all add up to a total structure cost in this project of $23.6 million. Then there are additional construction related costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 million and financing costs in the neighborhood of $325,000, which all come to a total construction cost or total project cost, pardon me, of $26,898,288. So what you saw advertised in the Act 34 hearing advertisement was a total project cost of just shy of $27 million. All of these are estimated. The project will be out to bid shortly and we'll know what the real costs are, but we have to give you the estimated cost today. The other costs that the Department of Education tracks, as I mentioned earlier, are the costs related to new construction across the state. There's a very small portion of that $27 million worth of work that is actually new construction. So if you track it in the forums, you'll see that there is a new structure cost plus architect's fees plus FF&E, which is finishes to furniture and equipment, of about $7.2 million, but that includes site costs. So because they're trying to track new construction costs, they subtract the $3.2 million of site costs and get to something that they call, the state calls, an Act 34 maximum building construction cost for the new construction costs only. That's the 3.959404 number that you see. So the, the advertisement that you saw for the Act 34 maximum building construction cost was related to the new construction portion of this only, not to the renovation of the rest of this building. So that number was $3,959,404. There is a clause in that that if the bids exceed that cost for the new construction by 8%, um, then a second Act 34 hearing is required. So if the new construction portion of the project came in greater than $4.276 million, then you would hold one more of these hearings. So there's one more tracking mechanism in the plan con documents, and that is trying to check the dollars that you're spending on the same 
allocated number of students that would go into those new spaces against what would be happening across the rest of the state. So using the forms, they come up with a total number of students that would go into that new construction portion. They multiply that by a state per pupil cost, and they come up with $6.9 million. Your Act 34 costs is 3.9. Um, therefore, you're far below that number, and there's no need for a referendum in this case. And that's pretty standard for projects across the state. So that's the balance of the project description and also the, um, the basic plan con forms. So I'm going to hand this over to Scott Shear for the financial alternatives. All right, well, good evening. Scott Shear with Public Financial Management, the district's financial advisor. So I'll just be reviewing a few pages, uh, basically getting into uh, the rationale and sort of the exploration and analyses uh, that we did with the district on the most affordable way to fund the project. So for starters, what we typically do for a project like this is look at four main alternatives of financing or funding uh, the project. So here you see, you know, we looked at number one, cash or some sort of short-term loan uh, that proved not to be feasible just given the scope of the project. Then we looked at numbers two, three, and four, which are various forms of financing. So number two is a general obligation bond issue, which is what the district is used to uh, issuing for its various projects or refinancing its existing debt. And number three, we also looked at issuing the debt through a different local authority. Uh, and then lastly, number four, we looked at issuing the debt through the State Public School Building Authority. So basically what we do is stack up the three different financing options that just went through, uh, that I just went through. And here you see up at the top uh, just a real quick illustration of the comparison that we did. So basically we, we, for illustrative purposes, we line up all three types of financing, assume the same kind of debt structure here. We're just assuming a 20-year level debt structure for illustrative purposes. And we compare basically issuance costs between the different financing forms. We compare interest rates and some other factors involved in the financings. Um, and so basically when we run through the analysis, you'll see that the general obligation bond issue provides the lowest upfront cost that the district needs to pay. It provides for the uh, lowest interest rates that the district and the taxpayers will, will pay throughout the life of the financing. It also provides for the most flexible uh, prepayment feature, the ability to refinance the debt. So basically going through that analysis, it had proved that issuing debt uh, as a general obligation bond issue, uh, which is very standard for the school district, was the, the most economical uh, to consider. We also looked at uh, sort of some other factors down towards the bottom of this page that could enhance or, or lower uh, some costs. And so you see number one down towards the bottom. Um, because of the school district's uh, very sound fiscal policies and management uh, that it has undertaken over the years, it has a very, very strong credit rating which results in lower interest rates. And when you have the lower interest rates, it means you can save on some other costs such as bond insurance. So the district's been able to save well over $100,000 or so by not having to purchase bond insurance just because of the very good uh, credit rating that the school district enjoys. Uh, number two, uh, because of the prudency of the school district and the board over the years, there actually is very little debt outstanding and has a very good debt structure to uh, be taking advantage of uh, uh, when structuring the debt for this new project. And so there are ways to structure this that we are able to do this with a very, very minimal uh, budget impact. And then we're going to show you a couple of the schedules of, of the debt service, uh, of the different debt service uh, schedules. Uh, on page 55 here, again, we're not anticipating any state reimbursement. Um, and uh, the other thing that we then factor in when we looked at the overall fiscal impact is not only the sort of the direct cost of bricks and mortar that we've heard about, I'll get into that shortly, but also other indirect costs related to this project. And some of those indirect costs are, are outlined there in the middle of this page where there will be you know, some additional fuel and utilities, uh, some additional uh, maintenance, additional custodial supplies, uh, and other insurance premiums that total about $48,700 um, above what the school district is currently paying. And so when you take that into account to the value of a mill right now that's currently collected by the school district, those indirect costs are equivalent to about 0.01 mills. 
So when we add the 0.01 mils from the indirect cost to then uh, the table down at the bottom, the millage impact from the various bond issues, you see here um, there's actually a, a, a negative uh, millage impact from the first issue that, uh, that we're showing here in 2018. That was about a $9.5 million issue uh, where it's showing 0.01 mil impact. The transaction that we did in 2019 showing 0.07 mil impact and the one assuming uh, a transaction in 2020 or so uh, has zero millage impact, so that totals the 0 0.06. So you basically total the 0 0.06 uh, from the debt service plus the 0 0.01 from the indirect cost gets us to a total millage impact or total millage equivalency of 0 0.07 mils. And again, that's calculated based off the various debt service schedules that we've included here. Uh, this page here shows the debt service attributable to the transaction we did in 2018. Again, roughly $9.5 million. Very good interest rates that the school, di school district was able to realize. Um, here on this page, the transaction from this year, uh, again, the school district's been able to borrow at you know, very, very low rates, around 2.5% or so. And then the last issue that we're assuming for sometime in 2020 or could even be later, uh, we'll uh, analyze that, come closer to time when the district's actually in need of the money. So again, overall, uh, it's re resulting in uh, 0.07 impact of a millage equivalency, which is basically about $7 per uh, $100,000 assessed value home that would be realized. So with that, I will turn it back to the solicitor for ending comments. go over the guidelines for public comment. When recognized, please approach the microphone and first state your name and address. Please only ask one question or make only one statement at a time to allow all persons an opportunity to speak. Limit your time to three minutes. Further questions or statements by individuals who have already spoken will be allowed after all interested persons have had an opportunity to speak. And please do not intentionally repeat previous questions or statements. Additionally, the public has 30 days following this hearing up to and including Thursday, February 6, 2020, to make written comments about this project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now it will be time for public comment. Um, please remember to write your name and state your name and address and put it on the paper. Is there a form there? No, there's nothing here. No. Oh. Design. Oh, thank you. For thank you, Dr. Bauer. Yes, yes. While Mr. Bauer is writing my name and address, I will <laughs> proceed to talk. And I said, you could start the uh, three minutes. And what I would like to do, what I would like to do is bring your attention. Now, I've been reading about Milton Friedman. And there is a differential between capital improvements, infrastructure, and actually academic and educational uh, improvement. And what you're doing is, yes, you're doing a fine job on delivering uh, infrastructure, impressive buildings, design, and everything, but I have never seen a doorbuck ever deliver an uh, inspiration to a child. They, they don't notice it. And what I wonder how many, how many of the instructional staff in this district are on board because you know very well when a contract comes up and we have a labor cost of $168 million. I do believe that's what it is, Dr. Dietrich. $168 million total cost for instructional personnel. So what I'm saying is when you put on a 6% increase in medical costs that are going up every year, 6%, I'm sure the negotiating committee will have to recognize that. And I'm telling you what's happening now with a 3.9% unemployment. Education and being in the, in the field of teaching will soon be where it was 40, 50 years ago. I'm not going into that. They're only offering me 100,000. Oh, they got a job down at Boeing, a painter. Wow, he's making $175,000 a year painting airplanes. Well, that, see, that's what happens when you get in a competitive labor, and we have never been there for a very long time. And this is gonna cause a great deal of concern when you go to contract negotiations. Yes, it would be beautiful. We need to stay focused. We need to do what would be the most money spent for the most good, 
And I, I, I'm all on board on this, but I said some of these other projects that we're talking about have to be thought about and deleted, and maybe we cannot keep borrowing money. We cannot follow the example of the federal government and state government, borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. It's going up a trillion dollars a year now. And where will the senior citizens be at that time? I got a, I got a pretty miserable increase. It was an increase. Of course, the Medicare eats that up. And there's people in Lansdale that are barely getting by. It's hard to believe, yes. But that, that community is in transition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pastor, Petrol. Could you just state your name for the sonographer? The sonographer needs to have your name and address. Yes. My name is William Patchell. I've lived in the district for 28 years. I live at 404 Bonnie, Bonnie Lane in Montgomery Township, and I've had two children go through the district. Thank you, Mr. Patchell. Is there anyone else that would like to make public comment this evening? Go ahead. Esther and I am a third grade student here at NAP. Oh, where did I A37, Gaysburg Drive, Lansdale. And I don't like the, I like the idea of the school, but I don't like the idea of t like all the buses and things in the field because at recess it has a lot of students playing in it and it's cutting our playroom in half. Thank you for your comment Esther. I believe they have extra play areas set somewhere else to make up for what that bus area is taking up. So you will still have your play areas available to you and your fellow students. Okay. Thank you for getting up and making a comment, though, Esther. Thank you. Have a good night. Is there anyone else that would like to make a public comment? Come on up. My name is Nadia Popek. I live at 201 Greenwood Road, and I'm a fourth grader at Napa Elementary School. I like the idea of the renovation because when I was in kindergarten, I had to go to the nurse's office every single day to use my inhaler because of the bad air in the school. And that is all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you, Nadia. Is there anyone else that would like to make public comment? I see a hand back there. My name is Shannon Whiting. Some of you might know me because I am the one that started emailing about the problems at NAP. Um, and I really do appreciate how you guys handled the situation and the feedback and how you got involved with everything. I've been here since 2009 and I have a child at Pendale Middle School that went through it and I have a child that is now in high school. And I still have two children at NAP. It is extremely important that this happens because the school really has deteriorated over the years. And it's difficult, you know, being on the home and school board when I was and hearing the teachers comment about the air quality and seeing children like my neighbor, Nadia, that just came up and talked, talking about how she has to go use her inhaler every day because of the air quality in the school. And I understand that it's a lot of money and some people think it shouldn't be done, but it's, there are kids that come here sometimes and this is their safe place. And when they have to wear a coat because the classroom does not have the adequate heat or they're sweating and it, exhausted because there's no air conditioning, like it really needs to happen. And I'm extremely proud that you guys have listened and really reacted to the situation. Because it wasn't good, and it wasn't good for the staff, and it wasn't good for the students. 
um, and it, it just wasn't safe all around. So I just wanted to thank you for responding the way that you did. And I really appreciate it. I've been here for a very long time. I think I've been through, what, four different principals now at the school, and it's just awesome. And I'm extremely proud to be a part of the community and be a part of the school and, and see what you guys are doing. And I, I just wanted to say thank you. It means a lot. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Whiting. Could you please state your address for the court reporter? It's 621 East Main Street. Thank you. I'll put my name on here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make public comment this evening? Hi, my name's Gideon, and I live at 837 Gettysburg Drive, Lansdale, just like my sister Esther. Um, and I really like this idea for the renovation. I think it's a really good idea, especially the fact that we're expanding some of the classrooms. Because when I go to resource, we have a table, a few desks, and at least three teachers are sharing the same room. And it's just a little room in the back of two classrooms that are connected. And there's barely enough room to fit a table to sit maybe six people in there. like just my me and my fellow people that go to resource and things like the band room I really like that you're going to expand it and I would like some maybe windows in there because it's a little stuffy in there like it's kind of like your back door like a back door leading to the closet and it's it it's not just exactly good thank you so eloquently and, and really perfectly for us is this idea of the 21st century education. So having those spaces where students can go and meet in smaller groups and, and so rather than being in one solid classroom all day long, students are moving throughout the building more. Um, and I don't think that we could have defined that concept or that term any better than you did. So thank you for that. Is there anyone else that would like to make public comment? No? Okay, seeing none. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, thank you so much. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, for everyone, for the presentation. We really appreciate that.